So I, I assumed you, you were talking about this part right here on his video where he talks about why, why is the, how is the probability that a z-score is less than 1.35 the, the same as the probability of less than or equal to? He talked about how the probability of getting exactly 1.35 is zero. So let's let's explore that a little bit. Um, now, be, before I go to a normal curve, I'm going to kick us back to last week when we were talking about a, like a binomial distribution. And the difference, there was different, there was different probabilities for if, if X is here, let me get a, my board going here. So I'm going to write, if I was looking for the probability, I was looking for the probability that X is less than four versus the probability that is less than or equal to four. And so this is a binomial distribution with 10 trials and the probability of success is 0.5. And and this calculator, this, this histogram calculator, I, was, I pointed you towards last week. Um, this this calculator doesn't have just less than. This has always is inclusive. It's either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So what I'm so again, what I'm trying to show is how is this different from the normal curve and versus being included or not included. So for this, this is not a continuous distribution. You know, it's discrete. Uh, discrete distribution, discrete probability distribution. And you see how the probability of getting four, exactly four is 0.2 and then 0.3. So if, if I wanted to find out what, uh, if I wanted to find this probability here, that's exactly what this calculator is telling me right there. Okay, that's that probability. So 0.37695. And then if I wanted to find, if I want to find this probability, well, using this calculator, I'd either have to subtract here. I maybe I just would have to subtract 0 0.025, 2.205, because that's not included. We don't want to include four. So right here, I'd have to say minus 0 0.205 was it, and that would give me my answer of what is that? Uh, one seven one nine five. Then, so in this calculator, if we wanted to do that with this calculator would have to change it to three and that way it wouldn't and that wouldn't do it. So it looks like I must have made a, a subtraction error or maybe it's just a rounding issue with the calculator. But to see how that didn't include the four. So with the discrete probability distributions, yeah, there's a difference between whether you're going to include the value or not. Now, what Dr. Stevens was trying to get us to see was, and I'm going to point you towards this normal curve here. Let me clear this. Clear this writing here. We're going to go to now. We, of course, we can't talk about getting exactly four or not. But I, I, I hope you've watched my videos about using this this uh, normal CDF calculator. I mean, you can use your graphing calculator for it, and there's many others that do it. I just, I just like this one. It's easy to use. It works like. So, what we're trying to decide is uh, what's the probability. Why is the probability of getting a z-score that is less than 1.35 the same as the probability of getting a z-score that's less than or equal to 1.35? So the way I'm going to do approach this, I'm going to try to figure out what's the probability of getting exactly a z-score of 1.35. Now, Dr. Stevens tells us it's zero, and he's right. So let's try this. So what I'm going to do, and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to try to get closer and closer. So I'm going to go between, if you know, if you haven't used this calculator, maybe I should do that. Standard normal curve, mean is zero, standard deviation is one. If I wanted to know uh, above a z-score of two, say, that would be that probability, okay? Or if I wanted, if I wanted to say below two, that would be that probability. Okay, and of course, you know, together they add to one. Um, and I can do it between, what if I wanted to go between, what if I want to go between negative two and positive two? The empirical rule that we learned about in chapter two said 95% of the distribution should be there. And it's, it's a little bit more than that, actually. I mean, the, the empirical rule is just a rule of thumb, but it works pretty slick. So now, I'm going to use this between feature to try to figure out what's the probability of getting exactly 1.35. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put between 
three five and one point three four. And see, it's a very skinny line, and that's a pretty small probability, but it's not zero. It's getting there. So then what I'm going to do is, why don't we try 1.345? We'll go, we'll split the difference. It's getting smaller. What if I make it 9? And that's 0.2. What if I make it 0.99? And there's zero. See, we're almost there. We've got just a very skinny, actually, we can't even see it on this calculator. The resolution doesn't show it because that's only, that's only what, well, one, one, one ten thousandth wide. So, and you see how that's zero. So that's why he was saying, uh, you know, the less than is the same as the less than or equal to, because that exact probability is of getting exactly that is zero. And then we kind of can, can see that here. Uh, I hope this, I hope this answers your question and explains it in a different way. Um, but that's why um, he said that, that, that forgetting exactly any one value. Okay.